In the math lessons, we go over parallel lines and how they move along in the same direction without intersecting. Well, the same concept applies to grammar. You can't switch back and forth between nouns and verbs or between verb tenses when you're describing a series of thoughts. Inconsistency interrupts the flow of your sentence and can be confusing. And worst of all, it'll cost you points on the SAT. But don't worry, we've got this. Let's start by defining parallel construction as it applies to grammar. Parallel construction is the repetition of a chosen grammatical form within a sentence. By using the same grammatical pattern for each compared item or idea in a sentence, you're creating a parallel construction. This is a helpful tool because it adds clarity and a rhythmic flow to your sentences. So when you compare or list items in a sentence, the item should have the same grammatical form. For example, Sierra likes to study, to bake cookies, and to volunteer on weekends. Each item of this list contains the verb form too. Without parallel structure, this sentence could read, Sierra likes studying, to bake cookies, and volunteering on weekends. It almost sounds like Sierra likes to study in order to bake cookies, and it definitely sounds clunky. See why we need parallel structure? Let's check out an example of a question we might see on the test. Harper's conservative party favors lower taxes, a more decentralized government, and the spending of less money on imports. Our answer choices are different ways in which the underlined portion of the sentence could be written. First, we need to decide if the underlined portion needs to be corrected. If it doesn't, we can choose answer choice A, no change. We have a list of items in our sentence, but we don't have parallel structure. The first two items on the list, lower taxes and a more decentralized government, establish a pattern that the third item doesn't match. The third item, the spending of less money, is currently a present participle but should be expressed in the same way as the first two, so answer choice A, no change, is incorrect. Looking at our answer choices, we can eliminate B because it changes the verb form from favors to favor. The correct form is Harper's Conservative Party favors, not Harper's Conservative Party favor. While this isn't part of the parallel structure we need to fix, we need to watch out for tempting answer choices that may fix the problem at hand but create another grammatical error in the process. Now let's take a look at answer choice D. Harper's Conservative Party favoring lower taxes, a more decentralized government, and less money spent on imports. Wait a second, that's not a full sentence, it's just a fragment. In this form, favoring becomes a modifier. If we wanted to use favoring, we would need to add a comma after party, a comma after imports, then a verb, and some other words after that to make it a full sentence. For example, Harper's Conservative Party favoring lower taxes, a more decentralized government, and less money spent on imports passed a new law. That would be an acceptable sentence, but that's not an option. So answer choice D is wrong. Cross it out. This only leaves us with answer choice C, favors lower taxes, a more decentralized government, and less money spent. This corrects the parallel structure issue for the third item and leaves the verb favors in its correct form. So C is our answer. Parallel structure is a great writing tool to have. Let's take a look at how this relates to comparisons. Comparative terms are often used to compare nouns and signal that parallel structure is needed. They include terms like as or than. When a pronoun is used in a comparison, it has to match the pronoun it's being compared to. For example, I like to read more than her. The comparison in this sentence isn't parallel because we have I compared to her. These two pronouns are different cases. It should have me paired with her or I paired with she. Since we can't start our sentence with me like to read, we know we have to change our second pronoun. So our correct comparative sentence structure is I like to read more than she. One of the more prevalent types of parallel structure questions you'll see on the SAT is the comparison of like things. Let's check out a sample problem you might find on the test. The ability of insects to detect members of their own species from hundreds of meters away is actually quite different from whales. The answer choices are A, no change, B, the whale, C, that of whales, and D, a whales. We know that the comparison isn't accurate as is because it's comparing the ability of insects to the entire species of whales. We're talking about the abilities of a species here, not the actual species. So answer choice A is wrong. Let's see if there are any answer choices that maintain the proper parallel structure. 
Answer choice B is comparing the ability of insects to the whale. That doesn't work either. And answer choice C, that of whales, can be understood to mean that ability of whales. That's looking pretty good, but before we pick it, let's check out D. Answer choice D sort of sounds good, but there's a problem. It's missing an apostrophe. If it said a whale's, we would be talking about the abilities of a whale. Without the apostrophe, we're talking about a wrong answer. So the correct answer is C. Nice work. Here's a pro tip for you. When the sentence is comparing two similar things, say two artists, authors, or poets, this is a red flag that the comparison of like things is being tested. Make sure that the work of one of the artists or authors is being compared to the other person's work and not the person themselves. A classic example is, I like the works of Shakespeare better than Dickens. This sentence incorrectly compares the works of Shakespeare to Dickens, not to Dickens' works. Instead, the sentence should say, I like the works of Shakespeare better than the works of Dickens. Now I'm sure you've been noticing how the skills for acing SAT questions keep building on each other, and the best way to remember everything is to practice, so keep at it. And remember, keep all the parts of a sentence balanced.